yeah, moderator, I'll move the seat when I'm participating in the panel discussion and when I'm moderating, I'll keep away a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much and uh, welcome here. Uh, welcome to panelists also. And before I start this, I want to tell you it is very important that you participate in this. And there's a reason for it. If you don't, you pay for the pizza you ate, okay? okay. So uh, we have very limited time. So I'm not going to uh, uh, make a big talk right now and I want to start right away. I want each of you to take a couple of minutes, introduce yourself, introduce the issue that you want to talk about and we'll go back again so that we can talk about the everything and don't leave anything out. I'll represent San Jose. So, how about you? Sure. Uh, my name is Oren Mahoney. I'm a former council member in the city of Cupertino and a former mayor there. And uh, the topics that I think most of us will, will uh, deal with tonight are, are two topics that are intertwined and that's housing and traffic. And uh, historically, when the Silicon Valley Leadership Group does their studies on their top issues, uh, those come to the top and they've just rocketed up, so. Thank you, Oren. I'm Savita Vaidyanathan, uh, four year on the Cupertino City Council. I was mayor last year in Cupertino. Uh, and like Oren said and what Eleanor said uh, earlier, the two things that are on everyone's mind is housing prices and traffic. And I always say they're two sides of the same coin, uh, H for housing and T for traffic. And if it lands on the edge, it's the environment that's at stake. So I think we have to keep all three in mind. Thank you. My name is Rod Sinks. <clears throat> I've been uh, elected in Cupertino uh, since 2011. I serve as the president of the Cities Association this year and I serve on the Air Board. Um, it's very important that we address uh, transportation more broadly and housing. So I would expand it beyond traffic because the systems we use to get around today are not the systems we need in the future. Um, but uh, this is causing such problems. Uh, our housing crisis, for example, I was at the courts recently and, you know, a lot of the crime that we're having in Silicon Valley is caused by people's inability to be able to afford uh, to live here. And, you know, our teachers have told us they're leaving. Uh, they can't stand the commutes from the places they can afford to live. So this is the issue of our time here. Thanks. Hello, I'm Jose Estevez. I serve six terms as mayor of Milpitas and I'm running for the seventh term. Uh, Milpitas uh, is a fast growing city. One issue, big issue, which could be region, uh, regionally, uh, regional issue is cost of living, which housing is part of it. Second one is, of course, traffic and transportation. We have been there need of uh, public transit as well. That's why we're happy to have more public uh, transit in Milpitas. And the third one is insurance that we have uh, excellent public safety. Well, we're having an uh, increase in population, increase in businesses, public safety should be there always. I'm Hong Wei, I'm an 11 year board member with the Fremont Union High School District. In case you're wondering why I'm with all these mayors and ex-mayors and vice mayors, I'm aspiring in uh, city governments. And I believe, um, you know, with, even with education, the issues we're looking at are housing, transportation, and it's entwined with environment, you know, with um, build housing close to work, that's gonna help the environment, uh, have trans future transportation to reduce uh, single vehicle uh, miles, that's gonna help the environment. So I believe that everything's entwined. So uh, <clears throat> I believe that housing, that comes out big. Everybody's talking about that. And so as Savita mentioned, H and T, they are related. So what I want to do right now is uh, I want you to start and dwell a little deeper in the housing crisis. What is the crisis and uh, what are you doing about it? And because we have uh, four out of five from Cupertino, thank you for moving out of Cupertino. <laughs> when did you do that? <laughs> we are happy. And me, so, too. <laughs> and me too, yes. So why don't you tell us more about uh, this issue of housing? Uh, 
I mean, let's try it again. I think it's working. Thank you. So we are very proud in California that we are the fifth largest economy in the world. And Bay Area in particular is the 19th largest. So we are very proud of that. But Silicon Valley comes with some great, I mean, we have great companies here, but then the same thing causes us a lot of a trauma. And the trauma has to do with how much time we spend on the roads. And that's because people are buying homes further and further away because they can't afford to live close to the place they work. We, uh, what somebody else mentioned was there's a survey that was done that teachers are leaving our area because they can't afford to teach, live and teach in the area that, where the school districts are. The people who work in any other jobs other than the tech jobs are coming to us from Central Valley. They're coming to us from Stockton and Tracy because they can't afford the houses in Silicon Valley. We have people who actually construct our houses who are coming to us from Los Banos. And then we complain about why the prices are going up when we're trying to get a plumber or an electrician, because they're coming from very far away. We need to be an open community and welcome everyone into our community and look for high density uh, construction so that we do it, especially where there's a transit corridor. Milpitas is a great example, and I think we should thank uh, Jose for that where you're building close to BART, what was mentioned earlier, transit-oriented. Transit-oriented development is the way to go. You have high density next to a mass transit location, so either people take the transit to get to work or the work, the job, is next to the, uh, high, uh, the mass transit, so people get to work using mass transit. And we also need to work on the uh, last mile, first mile issue so that people actually take that transit to get to their place of work. If you, once you're in an Uber on a lift, you'll go all the way, you're not going to get down and take another mass transit. So the housing and trans transit are really intertwined, and the housing crisis is further exasper exacerbated because of what's happening with the fascinating companies that are growing in Silicon Valley, which is great, but it also comes as a bittersweet pill. Orin, you want to add something? Well, yeah, the, I mean, fundamentally, it, it's supply and demand. I mean, it starts with that. I, I was at a, a, lit, a, a meeting today of the local chamber of commerce, and somebody was there who was a housing advocate. I think I think they were talking about 80,000 80, jobs, extra jobs versus houses that were that were brought here. So that that's what it starts with. And then if they can't live here, they're going to live further out, and then that's going to exacerbate the traffic problem. So. It really does start with supply and demand. And it's been, I'll speak for Cupertino. Cupertino has been for a long time uh, very housing averse. Um, and that's because Cupertino has these excellent schools and a number of people, most of the residents were concerned that if more kids go to my school, it's gonna be a problem. That's really shifted now because as, as we've said, people see now, we can't have good schools without great teachers. And if the teachers can't be there, we're not gonna have good schools. And people really see that you know their kids and other people can't be there. So I've seen a shift, um, even in the last four to six years in Cupertino, that uh, makes me a little optimistic. And we've got, later on, we'll probably talk about a, a big project coming up that gives us an opportunity to make a big dent in this. You know, uh, every time uh, people said the name Rod Sinks, it always sounded me, to me like Raj Singh. So, <laughs> until today. Raj Singh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, so, Raj Singh, why, why don't you, uh, you, there is one comment I want to make before you uh, okay, uh, say. Uh, you know, Cupertino is a kind of representative or representative of a Bay Area problem because you house a behemoth there, right? And you talked about supply and demand. Yeah, so you the take, Apple commands, that's right, to that. creates a demand for their technology all over the world, but it creates a demand of housing right here. So if you can. Yeah, I mean, uh, what can we say about Cupertino? We're, we're very proud of having it be Apple's home. Any, almost any city anywhere in the world would die to have, frankly, um, the the world's leading company, if I can say that without offending anybody from Mountain View. Um, and we are a microcosm of this planet. We are very proud of our diversity. We have people from all backgrounds. A lot of us choose to be in Cupertino because we love that, right? And we do have real estate. We can go up 
not in single family neighborhoods typically, but in our urban cores, we have more land. It's just we can't be afraid to go up. And if we are going to remain a diverse community, not only in terms of ethnicity, but in terms of the kind of people, right, that we all learn from, that we want our kids to learn from, we've got to welcome more people, and we've got to welcome people of all income levels. We've got to welcome the teachers, the service workers, the healthcare workers, all those folks that make a whole economy, right? If, if in Cupertino now the median home price is $2.3 million, we've really gotten to the point where unless you have, you know, a couple both in tech, it's darn tough to make a start. So if you think about a teacher wanting, even with, with um, a spouse who may be in tech, that 2.3 is looking pretty frightening. So. I recognize that um, we're not going to fix that by any one measure. Our Valco project that we could talk about isn't going to fix that entirely, but with every opportunity, we have to start to make a dent in housing. Make affordable housing that works for the uh, income level that serves teachers, for example, in our community, where reflecting the values of the community, we're very proud and many of us moved to Cupertino because we want our schools to be great. And you can't do that without great teachers and educators and frankly all the other people that make the school go. Um, but recognizing that at 2.3 million, we're out of reach for many folks. The other thing to recognize is, well, our neighbor in San Jose, median home price is 1.1 million. Now, how do we think about that today? People coming to Apple in Cupertino from the Almaden Valley of this vast region, right, or East San Jose, large stretches of San Jose where there's lots of room for more housing, or to Google and Mountain View, have the luxury of, God knows, it's a bus. Can you imagine? I mean, most places wouldn't think about that as a luxury, but in fact here, it's something that teachers don't have the opportunity to do. So they travel up Highway 85 or they travel on 280 to our city and stop and go traffic every day. And here's the deal. If you work for Apple, you may have to ha live somewhere close to be able to commute to Mountain View or have the luxury of being on that bus. But if you're a teacher, you can go anywhere and get a great job. And that's what's happened with many of our folks. They're, they're leaving this area. This is not a problem unique to Cupertino, obviously. So if we think it's the intellectual capital that's our biggest gift to our kids. We better be very clear that we have an institutional crisis that we have to manage on behalf of our kids, on behalf of the next generation. So if it's 1.1 million in San Jose and a teacher can afford that but not Cupertino, we have to go do the things it takes to get public transit to the point where all of our employees can get to our cities efficiently. And a transit lane, a dedicated transit lane, can uh, move about three times as many people as a lane of cars. So guess what? We got to go do that hard work. And it's tough. It's really tough. But we're going to have to do it, or our economy will fail. We just got to get the job done. You know, uh, once that Apple space station comes to full force, <laughs> I guess they'll have to build a, a second tier to this 280. And it will affect everybody. I mean, that's uh, that's uh, a spillover problem. But before I uh, come to Jose, uh, I want to ask people over here: How many of you know what is the meaning of Milpitas? Ah, <laughs> there is something. Yeah. Yeah. That's the chance to earn pizza. So, <laughs> well, you want to say that? Little cornfields. Yes, little cornfield. So this this little cornfield also has a big concentration of high-tech companies there, right? So there your, your uh, number of companies, even Cisco has spilled over into Milpitas, if, yeah. uh, if I'm yes, correct, yes, right? Yes, yes, So I want to hear, we want to hear yeah. your views on this. Uh, How is it affecting you? Well, the uh, city of Milpitas is a growing city, and uh, we have very diverse population, not only on ethnicity, but also on economic level. And at the same time, of course, uh, we want to have a balance of housing and jobs. We have growing jobs as well. We are a gateway to Silicon Valley. 
So what should we do? And so that's why we thought of uh, when BART is coming to Milpitas, we thought of rezoning a one mile radius around the BART station into what we call the transit area specific plan. In other words, we aim for a smart growth and that means pedestrian oriented kind of development and mass transit kind of development. In that center, we have the BART, the light rail and the bus station. And we build high density homes around the BART, sta BART station. And of course, it's to address the housing crisis. At the same time, the price is still not affordable. Although we are lower than Cupertino and some other areas, it's still considered high. So the city tries to aim for a more affordable housing. A certain percent of developments uh, go to, goes to affordable housing. And it's not yet enough. But the big challenge is that politically, small or some groups of people keep saying, no more housing, no more housing, it's traffic, it's traffic, you know. They don't really understand why. Housing is good provided it's built on the right place. Not, not, uh, not uh, sporadic, not uh, intermittent, not around the city, but it should be well planned. But surely the region needs more housing. We need housing uh, to help uh, more people. Uh, at the same time, with housing, with jobs, the traffic and transportation should be addressed. And that's why the mass transit, as mentioned earlier, is also important. That's why we are very supportive of any kind of development with respect to mass transit, with respect to uh, uh, road infrastructure to help on traffic. Uh, 237, for example, you know, if we do not expand 237, that region will be paralyzed because one, Milpitas is growing, North San Jose will be highly, highly developed. Uh, in Santa Clara, we have the city place, Mountain View is another uh, job area, and then along 237 itself, uh, we have growing businesses. So 237 is a potential place that we should address right now, the traffic issue. So with that said, you know, uh, the whole region should grow and should not be should not, we should not have any parking lot on highways. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Hungry, before I, uh, I have a very specific question for you, but I want to make this comment before that. Uh, you heard Eleanor talk about the propositions and uh, measures, right? Uh, I wanted to give a, I have a feeling about it and I, I stand in minority, as a matter of fact. I am against these kind of practice of direct democracy. I, I think the representative democracy should stop at electing the representative because these direct democracy measures and props, they have ended up tying the hands of our legis legislators and public officials. We elect them to do some job and then we tie their hands. So. I am really of the opinion that we should keep these things simple and let people do their jobs rather than make it more complicated. My, the details that you talked about, mind boggling. And I'm a very conscious person. I, I pay attention to this, but it is hard for me to understand. How far can we go? If you go even higher, there are very bad examples in the world in the history who practice direct democracy and similar things and they had a bad, bad, bad results of that. We are very fortunate in America that we have resources and all. So this was a little bit editorial, but I have a question exactly to this effect. And uh, there was, there is this question of Valco Shopping Center in Cupertino and what is going on. I am very sensitive to it because in San Jose, we went through similar thing in June primaries. We had measure A and B, and it was very manipulative, and it could have caused problems. Sam had to, or Sam Licardo, the mayor, had to do, spend so much of resources to educate people to defeat those measures, that measure. So, Hungry, please uh, tell us about what's happening here. So, um, you know, education, I think, is the key to everything. Voter education, residence education is very, very important. 
However, I believe leadership also is very important. Leaders lead to, to lead people to the vision and to really lead people to believe in something in the future. So I believe as an educator for 11 years, we're here to educate the voters, to lead them to believe in the vision and to really to be bold. Um, I can quote that one meeting, um, we have about a thousand parents came to our school district meeting. So you know that's pretty serious. So what we did is we did a collaborative thing. We got everybody together, had an advisory board, provide facts after facts after facts. They can ask any questions. Our district get professionals to provide any answers. And in the end, the people who have doubts, um, they sometimes they become uh, experts in everything, but they learn from the expert and they decided on their own, say that, wow, I understand now why the district is doing what they do now. So it takes a long time to educate a person, but it takes so easy just to say, save the schools, stop bad traffic. Developers are greedy. So these are slogans that's easy to absorb, but to say something, to explain that takes a long time. So early communication, early education, that's so important in any community to bring our residents along. It takes efforts, it takes open-minded, it takes education. Yeah. So you want to add a few words to this? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I just yeah, want to have something yeah, fun, yeah, fun yeah. with the topic. Yeah. So you don't think we're all experts in dialysis clinics? <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of the propositions. And I think that makes, that makes your case better than anything else. So. Absolutely right. So when you, <laughs> uh, we went through this last uh, two years ago, 2016. Uh, we had C and D, and like Hung said, they, every, both sides came with, uh, with slogans. But the group that was really against development said C is for citizens, D is for developers. So people come Make up America with great clever again. ways, uh, MAGA. Yeah. So, and the, now, and you talked about some of these tying the hands of uh, the local jurisdiction. There's a uh, SB 35 that was passed as state law from the state legislatures, which is tying our hands. Because if a developer comes with a proposal under that state law, the city council has absolutely no jurisdiction over it which means as long as they check all the boxes, it will be a ministerial process, which means it will go through the city staff. It will never come to the city council for anything. So we really don't like those. You are preaching to the choir here. We do not like those state laws. We do not like propositions. We absolutely would like any proposal to come through us, go through the process that Han mentioned. And if anything becomes really, people get very annoyed, we go through a more citizens process like we did for Valco. We had an eight month process where there was this consultant group called Opticos that got a lot of information out to the public, did a lot of outreach, got their comments over an eight month period, then brought it to city council. So it long deliberative process which gets everyone's opinion. It takes time and effort, but we need to do that so that we get, we have, we make an informed decision. Quick question by uh, Rod, and then we'll open to question and answer. So, the problem really, for example, with Valco is it's a $4 billion deal. It's very complex. You want a sophisticated party negotiating on behalf of all the residents of the city. And that is city staff and the city council ultimately making a decision. The problem you have when a developer comes in, as they did with uh, in San Jose or in Cupertino two years ago, is who's on the other side of this transaction, right? You have somebody doing direct marketing. It's like we have these marketing for pharmaceuticals on television. Who's the expert on your side advising you uh, with these things? So I know a lot of immigrants, they come to this country and they think, oh my God, you know, I have the right to vote and I can referendize everything. You know, we've even had uh, another candidate for council suggest that, you know, direct democracy, it's almost like we ought to put out a poll on everything on our packet now. Our agendas run to 15 or 20 items every two weeks. It's often a thousand pages, right? It doesn't mean we have to read everything, but there's a huge amount of education and study that goes on in, in becoming an informed council member. And you don't, our residents don't have the time generally to invest in all of these details and be a part of the conversations. It's not like they couldn't, but 
they really, when they elect us to the point that several of us have made here, uh, they're really counting on us to do that homework, to be diligent, and then negotiate on behalf of the city um, to produce results. Uh, and, you know, we can, our candidates uh, rise or fall depending on how voters view their positions on things that are important to them. But um, the, the echo chamber that some people get into when they go talk to their neighbors and they decide that city council's evil or they're in the pockets of the developer, frankly, right, uh, there's a lot of mix, myths created and that takes a lot of energy to take them down. And, and uh, I think mo most people who are elected in this valley are doing the right things for the right reasons. And um, yeah, voters, trust them or then they, they get replaced. I want to open uh, now this forum to question and answer. Yes, Sildner, you have a question. So, so this is, we have done a disservice in California to our roads. I think most people would agree that um, traveling our roadways can be a hazardous process. We pay a lot of money to fix our cars because our roads are, our roads are in disrepair. Our transportation systems need more money. Uh, SB1 by local state senator Jim Bell uh, was the best negotiated attempt in the legislature to fix this. So um, I, I fully supported SB1 and do not support Proposition 6, which would repeal it and, as you say, tie the hands of lawmakers going forward. I'd like to add to that. While I'm also on the city council in Cupertino, I also am on the board of VTA. I represent five cities there. And the board is uh, comprised of 12 people. At least six are from San Jose, and the rest are from the smaller cities. With the six being from San Jose, given that, Bart to San Jose got negotiated because of that. And Bart to San Jose through Milpitas does not happen with local dollars. It happens because you leverage dollars. You have local dollars, you have state dollars, and then you have federal dollars. And all that happens because there's someone negotiating on the behalf of the public trying to get them from their residence to their place of work and back. So if this is overturned, any of these projects which are depending on those dollars will not happen. As simple as that. It's not just local roads and fixing the highways. Big uh, projects will not happen. The answer is no. The answer is no. So I've got a, a, a little different view, which, which is because I'm not, you know, there's a lot of people that are, let's, you know, get rid of Prop 13, do this. So the question was about Prop 6 and, and the tax. So to me, I'm not in favor, of usually, of raising taxes. This one was pretty clear to me because the mileage has doubled since the last time that was there. So the price per mile stays the same. You know, we're not really increasing taxes at all if you go by mile, not to mention that electric cars aren't paying anything for it. So to me, it was really clear that this is really just bringing it back to parity. Any other questions? Yes. You know, this Valco issue has been very divisive in the community. A lot of money has been spent, I think, on all sides. And I'm curious that we live in an area where I think everyone recognizes the need for housing. So why has this been uh, such a divisive issue, in your opinion? You guys are hearing from your constituents every day. So everyone didn't recognize the need for housing. As I said four years ago in Cupertino, when, when the first Valco plan came in, you know, there were signs all over the place, save our schools. And it wasn't because there was office in there, and it wasn't because there was retail in there. It was because there was 400 units of housing. So the group that was against that project thought that 400 units of housing was going to destroy the schools. They wanted to stay a complete, as it was, empty mall. So 
that shifted a little bit to say that everybody thinks that housing is there. It, people are coming along, fortunately now, and even that group now says, oh yeah, some housing's okay. So I think it has morphed into um, more of a traffic issue. They believe more housing, more jobs are going to bring more traffic, which, which has some truth to it, right? So um, I truly believe, like Rod said, transportation, regional transportation, that's what we need to fix. Once we have regional transportation, if we can move people very quickly from downtown San Jose to Mountain View to Milpitas to back and forth, you can build a Google village for 10,000 people, but somebody works for Google for two years and next year he might be work for Facebook. So he's not gonna move, he's gonna stay there. So we need, I call it people movers. We really need a transit system regionally that's going to move people the close to job and housing gap. So that's what Rod has mentioned. And then we, all the cities in our area need to get together and maybe not through VTA, maybe more for private and public uh, collaboration, get money, get feasibility study, and then um, get transit through, have uh, federal and state funding, eventually get a, a very functional transit system. And then I think that would solve a lot of the issues. Uh, okay, guys, I think we are, our time is up. Thank you so much for uh, your questions, and thank you so much, panelists. You want to say the yes, last word? Yes, one comment. We, we're just <laughs> lucky in the city of Milpitas that when we had that opportunity to have the transit hub near BART, we have the bus station and BART, so we had the opportunity to build homes around it. So we have the transit hub, as you're saying, and we have the homes as well, so we could move people out, in and out, without adversely uh, impacting traffic. Thank you so much.